Mars, please. And just to see any, nothing special. But I thank God for that position that He has given me, where He can take care of the people who are sick and who are dying. It just reminds me of my mortality every day. <coughs> but I thank God that He came with this great opportunity to meet wonderful people and to be with them through these sad times. I was fortunate to meet the family, and many of them are here. Elisa is here, Lizzie is here, Karen, Maureen, Jerry, David, Michelle, Kristen, and Brian. Kristen was, by the way, my, my youngest daughter's good friend. And uh, they met through the internet. It's wonderful. <laughs> and uh, my, my daughter spoke to me the other day and she said, well, you met my friend Christine again. I wish I was there. And she's not here, but I, I'm happy that I met Christine. And then, sadly, we gonna came and Jennifer with us because they just left on the day that he passed on. And uh, I'm sure that they are here with, him, here with us in the spirit. And then we had Jennifer and Sally. I want to say this, that I really learned the character of Eric when I was there. He was a man who was always thinking about others more than himself. And uh, the wonderful soul that he was, he was telling me, we are all going to go to Europe. John, would you and your wife <laughs> join us too? <clears throat> I knew that was not going to be feasible. I hope it would have been because it would have saved me a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> but it just it did not really happen. But you know what? He's gone on a great journey himself. He's gone <coughs> to heaven. And I have no doubts about it. That when you know the Lord Jesus Christ and that you know that his blood has cleansed you of every sin that is in your body and in your mind. There is no way that you could go to hell because the blood of Jesus Christ has redeemed us totally. Totally. There is no shadow of a doubt that every Christian who believes in the Lord Jesus Christ as his personal Savior has a home in heaven. There is a home being prepared for me. <coughs> and sad to say, my friend and I, we were almost the same age. He was born in May and I was born in December. I wish we would have met earlier. But you know, circumstances in life bring us together at a time when we are supposed to meet each other. And God chose that I would meet Eric and Jackie at a sad place called the hospice. It was a time when we had a joys because Eric used to smile and he used to crack jokes every now and then. And then we suddenly saw there was a declining in his health. And uh, Jackie, as usual, was the devoted wife. Had tears in her eyes more often. And uh, I told her, Jackie, he's going to a better place. And no doubt about it, he is now in a better place. I want to read to you. I know that the deacons read a beautiful portion from the, from the Bible. But there's one portion which I would like you to read here for me. And that is in the book of Corinthians, chapter 15, and verse, in, verse beginning at 51. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpets shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall all be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, 
death is swallowed up in victory. And then the famous words, O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. And then he addresses us all in this wonderful passage. He says, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. And this is the message I want to bring to the family of <coughs> Jackie and those associated with her. Towards the end, I, I found out that besides the Ave Maria, the other song that my friend Eric like it was Amazing Grace. And I put the family in a spot. <laughs> they told her, John, you play the harmonic. And I said, yes, I do. And then I went to my car, and I brought a few copies of this Amazing Grace, which you have in your hand. And I said, now let's sing it together. I think they were not prepared for the shock. But I heard Brian sings well. <laughs> well. I'm sure that we all can sing unto the Lord because the Lord does not just see how well we sing, but how we sing to Him. And so we, I've given you the copies of the song, and I want you all to sing this as a tribute to Eric. Eric, my friend, he loved this song, and I want you all to sing as if he's hearing it. And without fail, try and sing the best you can, okay? I know that most of you all have got good voices.